Aleluia. I want to celebrate the God of all grace, the God of all glory, who has made this possible. Amen to Jesus. And let me take one of our scriptures. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Everyone here who could only talk about how he has done for the Lord, how he has endured hardship in the gospel, God is asking us that don't expect that to continue because it is for a while. Number two, don't think it is just for fun, but that you may be partaker of the eternal glory of God through Christ Jesus. And then number three, from this moment, you expect perfection, establishment, strength, and settlement. Can I hear you say a louder amen? Hallelujah. Life is present. The life has increased. We have the quality of life. The quality of eternal life has just been quickened. The Zoe is all over the house. Flowing from every man's spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Please take your seat. We are asking God for renewal of the covenant. As it is stated in the word of God that he himself has renewed the covenant. The first covenant given to Abraham was the law. But later by faith, Abraham walked with God and God gave him the covenant. It is by the faith of Abraham that the better covenant and the one for which we are seated was caught. And the object of that covenant is Christ. That's why anyone that is in Christ, you don't need to go for rituals. You don't need to go and do, be doing burnt offering. You don't need to go and be washing yourself in rivers. You don't need to use 21 sponges, you know, to bath. What he has said essentially is that you live by faith. Abraham didn't do anything to the covenant God gave him other than to just stay in fellowship with God. So we have the covenant already in us full of all forms of godly and supernatural package that a man can wish which was demonstrated in the book of Corinthians as Christ. The wisdom of God, the sanctification of God, the salvation of God, the redemption of God, the healing and whatever, the riches, the prosperity. So once you receive this new covenant, which you don't need anything to do about it other than just believe you are covered. But that is not to say that the enemy will not come to test you whether you really indeed understand the words of the covenant. And the oppression of the covenant. 
So when trouble comes, persecution, attacks, and all those things, what do you do as a child of God? You turn into the covenant. Where is the covenant stricken in you? In your spirit man. Not a matter of physical thing. Even though you cannot see it, but it is well secured and ordered. Certain, stable, cannot fail. And all you need to do is look in what? To your spirit. That is the server for the covenant. Hallelujah. So when you look into your spirit, you find the blessing of the covenant wanting to jump at you and assist you to quench the fiery fire of the enemy. Now if you pay attention by fellowship, by striking your faith, by trusting God, by the profession of your mouth, by deep and effective meditation, you will have empowered Christ inside your spirit and it will grow out like a springing well to form a flood that will carry your problem away. Is anybody with us this afternoon? That's the explanation. So what's our responsibility? We are not expected to run up and down. We are not expected to jump up and down. We are not expected to go and use money to do rituals, to kill animal. No, 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 no. We don't need that again. God has built his throne inside of us. And then the man of God brought the reality of the scripture to us in the book of Numbers. Where Moses had to strike the rock and the water came out. 1 Corinthians 10 says, Christ was the rock. That owner of the covenant in your spirit, your server, is the one that owns the rock is the rock that supplies water. It also made reference to what happened in John chapter 4, where I told the woman, if you believe, out of you shall flow the rivers of living. You ask from me. That's Christ. Because he knows he is the rock. He is the well. And that's what he pointed to us in Numbers. That you should ask the spring to spring up. When our spring is not opened up, all manner of things we want to distract us will be dull in spiritual things. We will not be able to make necessary connections between us and Christ. The strength will be disconnected. Everything the devil wants to do that we can see physically will seem to be overwhelming and overpowering. But immediately we are able to take the rod, which is God's word, for relationship, for quickening our spirit. Immediately we get that, we hit the rod. Water of life begins to gush out through faith. And remember in the book of Revelation, the Bible says, that river that flows from the throne of God is for the healing of the nations. is for solving problems of those who belong to the new covenant. So it is when you turn back, Inside your spirit, not jumping up and down, not doing abracadabra, not uh, going to one prophet and they say they want to sleep with you for five days and all those nonsense. It is by your personal engagement with Christ that that water will begin to spring. And as soon as it springs, the enemy will flee. Your strength will be restored. Your power will come. Whatever you need from God, as a result of this covenant renewal, will begin to flow and you will begin to walk in the reality. No longer shall people see negativity of our life, but they will see the impact of the fresh water of life coming out of our life in form of energy, in form of you know, prosperity, in form of so many things that the Lord has promised us. Hallelujah to Jesus. And now, don't forget the principle. The principle is this. The new covenant is embedded and waved up in your spirit. It's not something you see. It's in your spirit. It's only when you develop your eyes of the spirit that you see it. But how do you know? It's by staring your spirit in Christ Jesus. And you do that by study. You do that by striking Christ. You know? By releasing your faith. By confession of your faith through meditation, constant fellowship 
with God Almighty. Those of you who don't really have time to study God's word and pray every day, that may be a disconnection. Negative things may have power, but those of us who will keep to effective fellowship, we will enjoy the springing of the water of life. And that is the new covenant which have been made perfect for us. That we won't need to cry. We won't need to be sorrowful. We won't need to be afraid. We won't need to be poor. We won't need to go into debt. We won't need, you know, to suffer calamity in the hands of the enemy. But the water will spring up in you unto eternal life. You'll be strong, agile, and continue the race. Whatever we are called to do, you will enjoy it to the fullness. So says the new covenant renewed unto us today. May the Lord be with us. The river has been ignited and is flowing again because he said the suffering is for a while and is coming. Is for the purpose of sharing in the glory of God through Christ Jesus, which have been reserved for you. He said, after this, the Passion Bible says, you shall be strengthened. It also says, you shall be set firmly in your place. Three, the Passion Bible also says, you shall be powerfully and physically strengthened and restored. And then the King James Version say, there is settlement after now. Praise the name of Jesus. I also partake of that scripture because we are servants of the Most High. And I extend that to you. I don't know what you have suffered over time. In this renewed covenant, the new phase, you shall be set firmly in your place. You shall be strengthened more than ever before. You shall be physically and powerfully restored. And finally, you shall be raised up again. I see settlement coming for you. Settled in all good things. You know, there is a point you get to that you are just settled. Nothing moves you. In the name of Jesus. It's the face of our settlement. We become immovable, unshakable. We become unshakable for life circumstances. And we continue to do the work of God. So shall it be. Hallelujah. Don't forget. Don't let anything shift you out of this ordered word. Safe, ordered, ordered, and secure. Safe, ordered, and secure the new covenants. From this day, you shall not be shaken again. You will be strong to shake every shakeable, and you remain settled and unshaken established in every area in the name of Jesus I like you to put your hands together and worship the Lord say father I thank you Lord I praise your name Jehovah I thank you mighty God I thank you bless